November in here. So did you follow my Inktober project on uh, social media? Uh, in fact, just a few days before October begins, I suddenly decided, okay, let's uh, do Inktober. I was uh, not sure just a few days before and then you jump for it. <laughs> and uh, this is the first year I decided to follow the themes and it was uh, pretty special for me and I ended up uh, making some really special uh, illustration, really, really different from what I am used to do uh, in the process and also in the result and in the expression. So I am thrilled to share all of this with you, hoping that it will uh, inspire you in some way. So in this video you will be able to see all my works and also me painting uh, two of these uh, pieces so that you can get a bit more of the process and uh, how I worked uh, on them. I didn't achieve uh, the whole month because uh, there is a lot uh, going on in my head, in my life, but I really consider that I took on the challenge because I mean uh, doing that much uh, work in uh, one month is quite uh, special. And also for me it was really this challenge of uh, going out of my comfort zone and uh, do something so different that I, what I am used to do. So no matter the number of uh, pieces and they are already a lot, but as usual it's uh, above all the matter of uh, going further with your art and your artistic expression. So I worked a bit with Inktober the year before. You can check this uh, video about uh, some techniques uh, with ink that you can use uh, for this kind of uh, project if you're interested about it. But I did it more with urban sketching so without following the prompts. I think it's a bit uh, difficult to make both together because the prompts uh, give you you know a kind of restraint. So having the restraint of finding a subject uh, in uh, your surrounding uh, to be able to fit the prompt and also that can inspire you. I think it's not uh, so easy. Maybe some people are able to do it uh, successfully. But for me this year I uh, let go of urban sketching and decided to try to follow the prompt. So having to work uh, from my imagination, I'm searching for a few photos also on the internet to get a few reference uh, visuals and having to find an idea uh, with what I wanted to express and how uh, following uh, the prompts was pretty special. But the nice thing with this kind of challenge is, you know, day after day, you build on uh, the practice, the ideas come more easily and you also get a bit more comfortable with your process about how you build uh, this kind of uh, pieces. So that's what is really uh, interesting. And you also get more comfortable with your techniques and uh, how you make uh, these pieces. So at first I thought I would make uh, some kind of, uh, you know, black and white painting, light landscape, a bit with these uh, backgrounds or salt effect uh, like I did uh, sometimes previously. on uh, the theme ring so I wanted to uh, paint uh, Saturn you know not to take the theme uh, too straightforward and, and because I thought it could uh, make a nice painting with you know salt effect uh, for the starry sky and so I don't know what happened I suddenly decided I could uh, put a bit of a character hanging here in the sky and I think that finally that makes the whole difference in the process because suddenly it was uh, of course not realistic but also not a uh, real vision you know uh, you have a wrong scale and a kind of really imaginary setting and uh, this uh, kind of uh, set the mood for the whole uh, project and especially with kind of including this kind of uh, small characters on uh, my pieces and I think uh, you know they really help uh, to tell uh, the story. all kind of uh, imaginary setting from uh, my uh, crazy uh, creative ideas to try to depict a bit of an imaginary world. And by the way, I was really surprised and really thrilled by the reaction I get on social media, especially on Facebook, the people following me really kind of, I don't know, felt attached to the project and to this uh, picture that were expressing something uh, special and they were expecting the next uh, illustration. I felt a bit of a difference, you know, between uh, with the watercolor painting, uh, you enjoy a bit of the colors and and the rendering and the feeling of uh, beauty that you can uh, get when you try to enhance uh, the world and your subject with the paint or with urban sketching, that's also a way of seeing. But maybe with this kind of illustration, it pushes the people to see the world differently, but more in an abstract way, in the way you consider 
things and it makes a bit your mind and maybe your emotion also uh, react uh, strongly to art so it was uh, quite uh, special to realize uh, this also and because uh, in my uh, art uh, even with photography and everything it was always important for me to try to convey a bit of poetry and a way of seeing the world the fact that this time people uh, felt it more you know that the message maybe uh, came through a bit easier through this illustration it was uh, really really great uh, for me to say so if of course for this illustration I started with a pencil drawing because you know you have to set the idea of the page and also because I don't have the subject in front of my eyes I have to have some guidelines so that I you know have a bit of the visual uh, whereas when I have the subject maybe in front of my eyes I don't need the pencil guidelines because the guidelines are what are just in front of uh, me and also because of this difference of scale and you know I had to work on uh, how I wanted to organize a thing on the page so it was nice to have a bit of a drawing as a guide I tried hard not to fiddle with the drawing because I really wanted to express a thing with the paint and uh, taking the time more to grow the values and the effect and in fact frankly when you see just uh, the pure drawing at uh, the beginning it's a bit like you know rubbish drawing you can feel that it's not uh, the drawing in itself that is interesting but it's just a kind of uh, setting a bit of the thing on the page so that you can uh, paint with ink. Within my painting process I followed almost all the time a bit of the same process and because I like so much the impact of a negative painting I usually started with painting the background with kind of a mid or darker value to be able to have the subject stand out. background to define a subject it's also above all keep the light on your subject because when you do the reverse and you paint a darker subject on a lighter background so that's what I did in here for example it can give a nice result also especially if you pay attention to keep also some sparkle of light of white paper on your subject But you have 
have more this kind of silhouette effect and sometimes the subject can maybe not uh, appear so strongly and with uh, such a strong sense of light than with negative painting with a lighter subject and a darker background. I think it really helps to create some uh, volume so for this crazy illustration you can really tell you know how the subject kind of have a sense of uh, a strong light and uh, volume uh, and that it's uh, kind of stand out on this darker background. And by the way, several people uh, told me that uh, this illustration made uh, them think about the game uh, Dixit, uh, which is such a wonderful compliment. And I am so grateful that uh, people can, uh, you know, feel a bit of this uh, imaginary uh, daydream uh, atmosphere within my illustration, like for example on this uh, board game. On this one also, maybe you can really tell how the dark background can uh, make the subject uh, stand out because, you know, I chose to have a darker background at the bottom and a lighter background at the top. So at the top you have more kind of classic illustration style with this appearing darker than uh, the background. But in here you have a, maybe a sense of uh, the bottle and the subjects are kind of glowing because of this negative painting work on a darker background. And by the way, in this project I made the craziest uh, negative painting work uh, that I ever done because when you have to define all this kind of uh, uh, small light white subject uh, with a background in here. It's such a difficult uh, task but a good challenge once again for me. And also by the way the paper was not really good. I wanted to work not for once on 100% uh, cotton paper because with cellulosis papers can be easier sometimes to create some background effects and everything. But uh, this is a Clairefontaine I think supposed to be watercolor paper but it was a bit uh, special kind of uh, creating feathering when the paper was uh, wet uh, before so difficult to get hard edges afterwards and also because it was cellulosis paper it's uh, more difficult to grow a wash without having hard edges inside so it was even more a challenge to be able to create this negative painting and growing a wash around all of uh, this without creating uh, hard edges but I decided to keep going on this paper because it was a great occasion for me to improve my skills for example here on negative painting and growing a wash uh, you know even uh, quicker without creating these uh, hard edges and also uh, maybe at first I was thinking I'm going to play a lot with effects and everything and even if I kept uh, really the salt effect on the drawing because I thought it was uh, really interesting for the rendering of this illustration I realized that because the paper was not so good maybe this will uh, push me to go more in the illustration and what I wanted to draw and to express uh, within this illustration and not relying so much uh, on effects that I would be more artist to create on all the kind of uh, paper. So sometimes the restraints, you know, kind of uh, guide you in uh, one direction or another. So if you feel that it can be a good direction for you, even if it's a bit out of your comfort zone, go for it, of course. So I think this one was probably the craziest uh, negative painting uh, to do. Even if it uh, doesn't really show on the final illustration, I thought after a while that I should have drawn this uh, one probably on the lighter background because it wouldn't have been so difficult and maybe also so the result in here is a bit uh, messy, but it was, uh, you know, a good practice to try to go around all the tree branches and all these uh, small subjects. So as a supplies, I use the mainly India ink, but I also used uh, some uh, black uh, pen for finer detail that uh, it was a bit more difficult to make with a brush. And I also used a white gel pen in order to get uh, smaller details. Even if you know me, I really wanted to use negative painting to have the white of the paper because it's so much more beautiful that uh, using too much uh, white at the top like gouache or something but for fine detail it's really work uh, well to use a white uh, gel pen so my favorite white gel pen is by the way the uniball Signo uh, broad really like this one uh, I recommend that you take the broad one because I feel uh, even if the line is slightly thicker uh, also the white is stronger and thicker and really feel a bit like a pen it's almost feel a bit like an acrylic marker but I'm sometimes a bit annoyed with the Posca paint because you have to shake them and sometimes you know the paint really doesn't come through. Remember with this one I really feel I never have any trouble and it was a really nice uh, tool for me during this uh, project. <laughs> by 
painting the background. It was really fun, of course, to use a soul to create an effect on the paper, especially to depict uh, snow, or sometimes uh, stars, like on this one or this one, and sometimes just uh, for effect, uh, you know, having this kind of uh, cloudy texture. No. And once again having a different uh, rendering in the piece uh, between a uh, wet uh, texture background, uh, some uh, you know more refined uh, details and sometimes also some smoother area. I really liked on some pieces having this uh, yeah this opposition between really smooth uh, washes and uh, texture area. I know that I tend to put sometimes a bit too, uh, too much details and too much you know contrast uh, everywhere so it's uh, nice uh, for me to sometimes think about uh, having kind of uh, okay a step back in the approach of my pieces and sometimes keeping a more plain area so that it's uh, kind of a bit of a rest for the eye also. It was also a way for me to work a bit more on this uh, salt uh, technique and realize uh, how much uh, different the effect uh, could be especially depending on uh, how wet the paper is and how many pieces of salt you put, also how dark, you know, how much uh, ink you have on your paper. So for example in here, because I wanted kind of a more plain uh, background, I used uh, just a few crystals in here, but uh, trying to really restrict myself and not putting it too much. Whereas in here, I really wanted to get a bit of crazy with the effect. And also I decided to have a dark background at the bottom so that the main origami crane would uh, stand out and having a kind of light background in here. To get a sense of light and you can really tell that because in here there are more ink and a bit less water the effect is you know kind of uh, smaller whereas in here because the wash was more diluted to have a lighter gray uh, the effect is uh, really stronger and you have this kind of cloudy rendering that uh, I should explore a bit more I think to understand a bit more how this uh, salt uh, thing works. So I'm just using uh, my kitchen uh, salt, uh, really, you know, the fine uh, uh, one, and it works uh, really well. You have to wait a bit for the wash uh, to dry before putting the salt. I mean, of course, when it's still wet, but don't put it right away. Wait a bit for the paper and the wash to stay a bit shiny, but, uh, you know, not so much as a puddle, and you put a bit of salt. Sometimes if uh, you feel it was a bit too soon, uh, you can wait a bit more, and and add a bit more salt afterwards to get a bit the effect you want. But in fact what uh, salt uh, does is it attracts a bit of the ink that's what uh, you have uh, in the middle, uh, really in dark uh, point, where, so where the grain of salt was, uh, it's kind of uh, sucked the ink and so it's the reason why all around there is no ink left and only a puddle of uh, water. And this is how the effect is created.
then gradually uh, putting some uh, shadows on uh, the subject to create a sense of uh, volume and define it and a sense of uh, light. I hate to think that I'm an escapist You might just think that I'm sad But I know I feel amazing When I get out of my head We're kissing strangers Just to feel something and see in technical Makes them so much better Dancing on the chaos Makes me feel I'm in control It's not a good thing Get out while you can no one wants to be around the tornado Oh, 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 will I ever like to keep my head on? I, I, I don't know where you should leave Cause you're lonely in the purse Once again, it was quite a different way of working as usual because you know that with watercolor I usually like a really loose way of working and really spontaneous kind of, you know, first layer and that's it, that's how you get the fresher colors and rendering whereas in here, maybe because it was in black and white it would be interesting to see what happens if I try to make this kind of illustration with watercolor, you know, using colors maybe an idea to follow through but in here, in fact, I worked uh, quite a lot with layering especially on the main subject also because I wanted to create a imp slight impression of realism on some subject to kind of balance the dreamy feeling of the illustration makes them so much better dancing on the chaos makes me feel I'm in control it's not a good thing get out while you can no one wants to be around the tornado oh So it's pretty obvious, uh, for example, for this uh, cheetah I am painting in front of your eyes in this uh, video. Uh, I mean, even if it's not so realistic, it's not so much cartoony either. Or, you know, when I use sometimes just a few lines just to evoke the subject, but without really drawing it, in here I decided uh, to make a bit more drawing uh, to have, as I said, this kind of balance between the realism and the daydream. My head is obvious also with the brain in here where I worked with kind of a refined way on the shading uh, for the brain and all these uh, details uh, in here for example also for the key most of the illustration also show a kind of an opposition between the kind of a blurry background so I worked wet in a wet uh, usually on the background like in here for example uh, for the trees and also a bit for the fur I'm so good at avoiding the issue Bite my tongue so I don't have to deal with it I'm so comfortable playing the victim You know I am the easiest game to win You've been testing waters Wondering how far I've been before I break need to claim back some power So what's it gonna take? What's it gonna take? So you have a kind of blurry environment with a sharp subject at the top and it was uh, quite obvious also on this one when you can have an impression of uh, wood behind uh, with a uh, wet in wet uh, work and salt effect and in front you have this really sharp main subject and uh, some uh, people uh, discovering this illustration uh, told me that uh, they thought about uh, what we are doing in photography by using depth of field and having the focus 
on something and playing with a blurry background and uh, yeah it was quite interesting uh, to realize that I was using something I really love and I learned to use in uh, photography in this illustration as well. Uh, most of them are maybe sometimes a bit too buzzy already so having kind of a blur effect uh, you know help you to kind of focus of course uh, the eye and simplify a bit the illustration so that only some parts are more detailed. I use a lot this technique about you know adding a stronger value and then softening uh, the edge. The laughing soul of the party, the drunkest girl in the room. You know I'm just getting started when everyone is gone home. Cause I don't want to scare you, but I'm spiraling and I know I don't mean to. And it's not your problem, I think I'm a train wreck. I get high. so much fun for some of my pieces to really kind of see the subject uh, pop out of uh, the illustration or the page of the drawing and suddenly you know uh, come to life through your work on values and also adding details we keep chasing the same old disaster I think it's such a fascinating thing to do, especially when you work with an imaginary scene from, you know, from your mind, from your imagination, uh, you recreate something that uh, never existed before. So it's kind of really surprising to suddenly have your own creature appear from the page. In the October prompts, uh, some words are really difficult to find an illustration uh, from. So that's how I got myself, for example, for the theme Ashes. Uh, to try to paint a phoenix, so what I, you know, never painted before, of course, and a dragon or everything, so it was quite uh, funny, you know, to try all these kind of things and see a new thing appearing of paper, like uh, this uh, cute uh, puppy dragon. <laughs> additional little game about adding an origami, a really small teeny origami piece on uh, the illustration. box. Oh, by the way, this is a box that are from my grandparents' house that I found. Paris, uh, I think it's kind of medicine 
uh, old uh, box uh, treasure that I found some years ago on my grandparents' houses. And in here, they are called really teeny, teeny origami. So I used a lot this teeny crane origami. It was difficult to make them uh, so small, but uh, really fun. So this is the crane origami. Oh no, in fact, uh, the one I used the most, uh, I think, was this uh, smaller one. Uh, Tiniest origami ever. I wanted them to be a bit subtle in the illustration so that you don't see them right away uh, and that uh, suddenly they arrive a bit like a small surprise so they have to be really teeny. So a little uh, teeny paper boat. I think I have another one and I put a bit of uh, grey marker on this one to give a bit of uh, depth and a sense of uh, shadow on this. I also made a little fish with a bit of uh, grey marker as well. So I just used a few of the origami uh, folding that I already knew. Uh, there is also another fish uh, in here but this one is bigger obviously. Except uh, this uh, butterfly I searched for uh, new tutorials to make a small paper origami butterfly. And for some of the snowy illustration or maybe star, I also created this kind of a small star or snowflakes uh, thing. It was uh, quite difficult also to make them small. I couldn't really manage to make them smaller than this, but that's already nice and cute. The laughing soul of the party, the drunkest girl in the room. You know I'm just getting started when everyone is gone home. imagination i want to know everything please share in the comments thanks for watching may the creative force be with you and see you soon <laughs>